Hi everyone, it's Max and welcome to a secret reading vlog and I am going to be reading the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert, which is a lot of smut. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be honest I have heard there is a lot of smut and this series is kind of like a retellings where like the Disney princesses get with the villains instead of the heroes I have heard things about really just about learn my lesson which is the second book that follows Megara and Hades um, but I found that the whole series is like in a compendium on ebook form was only like 30 bucks so I decided to buy it so I have all of the books I also have Desperate Measures which is the first book on audio which might be a bad choice honestly um I just like I was looking it up and I saw that was only 10 bucks on audible there was like a deal for president's day or something so I got it we'll see I think it will be good to have an audiobook um especially because they're all like standalones so I don't have to like specifically I think read them in order so it'll be okay for me to listen to desperate measures throughout the week but I thought I would give you the synopses for each of them and then rank them. The last book is a short story collection. I'm not going to include that in the ranking because it's, you know, that's kind of like, I don't think that's really necessary and I don't think it should count towards a ranking because there's short stories. And I'd automatically probably put that at the bottom because, you know, short stories don't really, I don't think they measure up against full length novels. But the first book is Desperate Measures, which follows Jasmine and Jafar. And this is where I think Jafar kills Jasmine's father, right when she's supposed to get married to Ali. And, oh, and all of these books take place in, like, this modern city. And so, like, her dad used to run, like, part of the city. And then Jafar stages a coup and wins, and he takes over her dad's part of the city, and he also wants Jasmine. Partially because, like, you know, whoever has her, basically, it's like, yes, I've totally taken over. I even have his daughter. And partially it's because they had this simmering lust and feelings for each other for years. And when he found out that she was going to marry Ali, he wanted her. This one I think could be good. I never really liked Jafar. I mean like I think he's a good villain but I definitely think he's a bit of a sleazeball so I'm not quite sure how much I'm gonna actually like him but we'll see. The second book is Learn My Lesson which is the Hades and Megara retelling but I think there's actually like a threesome like I think Hercules is part of it because he decides to like save her from Hades who runs the underworld basically like you know like actually and then he finds out and then he finds out that she actually like wants to be there and I think he kind of gets swept all the way into it this is the one that I have heard someone reading and I think it was like Riley Marie I can't remember her name the a booktuber who like hosts Smutathon and I think she read this and really liked it I might be wrong but I think so because this cover looks really familiar and I know it was a Hades retelling so We'll see. Um, so I think I am going to like that one uh, because I do really like Meg as a main character. Um, and I don't know, as long as she keeps her sass, I think it'll be good. And also I find that interesting. We'll see. The third book is where I think I'm really going to like it. And that's A Worthy Opponent, which is a Peter Pan retelling where Wendy gets with Hook. Now, okay, right, here's the thing. I have read multiple Peter Pan retellings and I've always liked the idea of like Hook being like a redeemable character because I know in like a lot I think this might have stemmed from like Once Upon a Time the show where it turned out Peter Pan was the villain which I have heard I'm still like confused if like J.M. Barry actually like like proved this or if people just like think like hey Peter Pan steals kids like Hook's just like the good guy trying to get like stop this child kidnapper you know which like I like that idea especially because in Once Upon a Time Peter Pan is a bad guy I just can't remember I've heard that multiple places where it's like Peter Pan is actually like a bad like a villain and so I do like the idea that Hook isn't actually the bad guy um and I have read one book where that's the case, where she, d I think, I might be wrong. <laughs> I think I did though. Um, yeah, so I am really excited about that one. And Wendy is trying to get revenge against Peter Pan. I don't know why, but she wants to get revenge against him and she teams up with Hook. 
And the only price, like, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll help you if you marry me or like get with me or something. So really excited for that one. Honestly, spoilers, I think I'm gonna like that one the most. Now the next one is The Beast, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling where Belle gets with both Jeff or uh, what's his name? Gast, G what's his name? Oh, Gaten. In this, it's Gaten. Sorry, I've got the Goodreads pulled up so I can like kind of see it. So it's Gaten, aka like Gaston and Beast. And I think it's again like she gets with both. Now, Gaston, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this because I didn't, I don't like him. Like, I don't find him attractive. You know, at least Jafar has like kind of like a sexy villain thing going for him. But Gaston, not so much. And so I'm a little nervous about this one. So, okay, so this is like going from the original Beauty and the Beast story where she's got sisters. And her sisters task her with securing her power. And so she's going to... Okay, so to secure her power, I think her parents die or something, uh, she gets with both Gaten and the Beast so that they like help her keep her power. We'll see. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites. So, I, like, going into this, I thought I was going to like it the most. But I don't know. I don't know about that one. We'll see. All right. The next one is, without a doubt, going to be the, 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 the bottom one. And that's the Sea Witch. And this is because I heard there's tentacle porn and... Like, no shade if you like tentacle porn. It is just not my thing. So the fact that there's tentacle porn in this, I think, is going to really put me off. So, mm, not sure. But this is where Ariel makes a deal with Ursula, gets her legs and all that. But it turns out Alaric is not all he seems to be. And she realizes that he's actually, like, a bad guy. And I think she works with Ursula to, like, stop him. I just, it's really just the tentacle porn part that's really putting me off. <laughs> I'm just like, mm. like, just thinking about it makes me a little uncomfortable. So we'll see. Not sure though. Who knows? I might love it. It might be the best one. It'd be a little, that'd be interesting, but it might be. And then the last one besides the short story collection, which obviously I'm not counting towards my ranking, is Queen Takes Rose, which is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, where Sleeping Beauty makes a deal with, I think, Malone, who's supposed to be, like, Maleficent, and then she becomes super powerful and, like, does stuff. And, like, she's got, like, some sort of contract. And the last month of her contract, she spends it with Malone or something like that. I'll be able to give you better synopses once I start reading them, obviously. But, yeah, so it's female-female, which I do like. Um, I'm excited for. But, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, Sea Witch is also obviously female-female, but that one just, like, I don't know. The tentacle porn thing is freaking me out. But I think I'll like Queen Takes Rose, Definitely more than that, because again, Maleficent is a badass bitch, like, and she just, she was slighted, she wasn't invited to a party, which, like, screw them, and I read something where, like, back in these days, like, where it takes, like, when it's based, it's, like, especially for a royal party or, like, a birth, literally every single person in the country is, like, invited, and so it's a huge slight when you're not invited, and in real life, like, duels had taken place if they hadn't been invited, and it's, like, it's, like, a big thing, so the fact that Maleficent was a little pissed that she wasn't invited is actually, like, super valid of her, so I'm, like, you know, I think she's a super sympathetic villain, I mean, she probably went a little too hard by cursing a baby, but, like, especially if you take, like, the live-action films as, like, canon, which, I don't know if they do. Like, I'm like, is that technically canon? I think so, because Disney made it. So, like, screw the dad, you know? So I think I will like it. Um, so for my ranking, last place, The Sea Witch. I really don't think I'm going to like it. I really think it's going to... It's gonna really be a hard no for me. We'll see. Then for fifth place, I'm gonna go with The Beast. Again, even though it's one of my favorite, like, Disney films and, like, fairy tale, and I love reading Beauty and the Beast retellings, I don't know. I don't like Gaston, and so I'm just a little nervous about how that's going to go. Fourth place, I think, is going to be Learn My Lesson. I, I don't know. Hades, again, like, I think he's a really funny villain. I love Hades in the Hercules movie, but I just don't find him an attractive villain. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I love Meg and I like Hercules, but I don't know. So we'll see. I just think Hades might ruin it, but 
So yeah, that's gonna be fourth place. In third place, I'm going to do Desperate Measures. Again, Jafar isn't my favorite villain, but I do like him more than the others. And honestly, J Jasmine's dad in the movie, like, is an idiot. And so, like, you can kind of see where Jafar is coming from. And I also love the, um musical that was put on by the guys who did like a very Harry Potter musical or whatever called Twisted where it's from his point of view where he's like I'm just trying to help like what's the street like this guy coming in like changing you know and so I do like that idea and so like if this takes that route which I think it is because Ali I think is a scumbag I'm going to enjoy it so that one's going into the third into third place second place is going to be Queen and the rose queen <laughs> what is this called queen takes rose because i do like maleficent a lot and i think that this could be really fun and i do like aurora like i wish she had more agency even in the live action re or um prequel remake sort of situation i wanted her to have more agency and so i think in this one she's like badass so i'm into it and then in first place, I am going to do a worthy opponent. Again, like I said, I do really like where Hook is actually the good guy. Peter Pan is the bad guy. And I just like, I don't know. For some reason, I think as long as he's not like, you know, the age difference could be a problem if this is like the age difference that Peter Pan is. I'm kind of hoping this is like a few years in the future or Wendy's just aged up. Because um, I just like, I like the idea of... Hook and Wendy, which I don't know what that says about me. I don't know. I just like the idea of Peter Pan because I think he's the easiest one out of all of these to like make a case against of being like, no, he's like actually like a bad guy. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. So last place is Sea Witch. So, so sixth place is Sea Witch. Fifth place is The Beast. Fourth place is Learn My Lesson. Third place is Desperate Measures. Second place is Queen Takes Rose. And first place is Worthy Opponent. I'm not going to change my ranking as I go. It'll just be at the end. I will then show you what the actual ranking is. So right now, this is my prophesized ranking and we'll see by the end of this vlog what my actual ranking is. I am so excited. I hope you all enjoy. I'm really pumped about this and I will talk to you once I've started Desperate Measures. <laughs> okay, hi guys. Um, sorry if you hear like dinging. I'm part of this group chat at work and people are talking so you might hear it because I don't want to mute my computer or anything. But it's a bit later and I have already finished Desperate Measures. I listened to the audiobook at 2.2 speed and I banged it out. It's quite a few hours later. Um, it's like about four hours and yeah, wow. I'm, I'm at work and and it was and it was just really busy and so I was just I just sat down was listening to my audiobook as I went and oh boy it is smutty. <laughs> wow, it was so smutty. So I had a pretty good synopsis there where Jafar stages a coup and takes over Jasmine's dad's business. And he's basically like, listen, Jasmine, um, you're mine, basically. And what I did, you know, I was a little nervous and Katie Roberts did a good job at putting a warning at the beginning, being like non-consensual, non, like, non like, like, it's not rape, it's not, because they have a safe word. And he's literally like, tell me your safe, tell me the safe word and I'll stop. And she doesn't, and she very specifically, like he t he does it multiple times. And she literally goes, Jafar, stop asking you, no, I'm not gonna give it to you. Cause she want, like, she just like, one of her kinks basically is running and kind of being like, no, you're forcing me. Like, ah, like, you know, like brute strength kind of thing. And so she does it a lot. And you know, he's just like, listen, he's like, if you actually want me to stop, like use our safe word. And she doesn't. And he, she, then one time she does and he stops, he immediately backs off. So like, you know, I feel like people could get angry about it being like, this is rape, but it's not. Like, it's a kink of hers to... 
<laughs> God. to you know be chased and be like kind of for him to use like brute strength and force but she actually wants it like oh my god that sounds like what people say about it's like oh well she dressed that way so she must have wanted it that's not what I'm saying like she very clearly has a safe word that he makes her say he's like and what is it you know to like make sure they're both on the same page and it's Raja which I think is like I don't know I think it's like funny because that's the name of her tiger but also like why Raja like I feel like you know I don't know I feel like it make more sense for it to be his parrot Iago or something <laughs> which Iago isn't even a character like there's no character named Iago there's no it's not like he has a pet parrot or anything which I'm a little bit like why um but yeah so it was wow it was so there's so much sex I was literally like Oh. Um, it felt a little weird listening to it while working. <laughs> I'm gonna admit it, it was a little weird, but um, wow, there was so much sex. And like, she calls him daddy, which I really hate. I hate. It makes me so uncomfortable. Um, yeah, the daddy thing. And like, I mean, she does it well where like, he is. Like, I mean, you know it kind of works because like I mean it didn't make me as uncomfortable as it has sometimes where like he is a bit of a... and like I think she did a good job like Jasmine's 25 in this 20 25 in this and so like you know I think in Disney canon she's like 15 so she, Katie Robert does a good job of being like no this is like consensual between two adults she's like an adult adult and I really liked Jasmine I really liked her she is like she has never been allowed to leave her dad's like mafia palace ever she has never seen the outside world I mean she's allowed like out in the gardens and like and on the estate but she's not like she's never been to a city she's never been anywhere and I think it does a great job of her chafing like she's like I need to get out like I don't want this and that showed some good character development between both her and Jafar where like Jasmine by the end is a badass bitch like she is so great um and Jafar is like he's realized he's like no I need to let her fly or else I'll lose her you know and so it's there's some good character development I was impressed um honestly like yeah I liked it I mean wow there was a lot of sex and boy was it uh <laughs> steamy <laughs> <laughs> and Hades does run like the underworld which is a BDSM club basically but like also like he controls basically everything like this is where people go to do deals and it's all very you know like gangs and mafias and okay Hades is not as bad as I thought he was gonna be like I mean he kind of sucks but he's also kind of someone who just doesn't take sides like he will work with anyone so he works with both Jafari and Ali, who's kind of like, he's the main villain in this story, you know? But it's more like, it's not like him being a jerk. Well, there is one instance, I'll say, where he is a jerk. But it's kind of like, he's like, listen, he's like, I do business with everyone. I am Switzerland. He's completely neutral. He's like, I don't, I don't rat on any of my people to others he's very much like a neutral party and so that's why people come to the underworld to do dealings and to work is because he doesn't put up with anything you can't bring weapons in it's very much like you're meeting on neutral ground and Hades no one touches Hades he is very much like the most powerful person I think in Culver City so I am interested to see um the next book and I'm interested to see his and Meg's relationship because Meg works for him in this underworld she's his right hand woman basically right hand man um she's got a lot of power I didn't think she was going to like I, I don't know I didn't think she was gonna have any ability like control over no she's got like all the control she is as untouchable as Hades it's basically like they're kind of they're almost on par with each other like he's got a bit more um power because she has a deal with him he makes deals right um but she's like she's the most powerful woman I want to say in Culver City almost and it's um yeah so I am actually really interested to read learn my lesson next and see their relationship and honestly okay the audiobook there's two narrators which I was like wow I don't know there was more production than I thought there was gonna be in this um I really liked the girl narrator uh the guy not so much <laughs> he 
sounded, I don't know, he sounded like, I don't know, I, don't, I can't like do it myself, but it sounded a little cringy, like, oh my god, when he called her baby girl, like, oh. Like, there were some times where I was just like, oh my god, please, please stop. I was like, please, no. Like, it was just, I don't like his voice. Um, it was very gravelly, which I mean, like, no, it, like, made sense. But to hear him, like, do dirty talk was a little bit like, oh my god, no, like, please stop. Um, a little weird, a little weird. But I did like Jasmine's narrator. Um, I thought she did a good job. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it a four out of five stars. It might even raise, rise, as I read more. But yeah, like, Smut was A+, plus, which you're reading this basically for the Smut. Let's be honest here. Let's all get on the same wavelength. This is a Smut. This is a book that is smutty, and it's like, you need, yeah, whew, and boy was it. There was some... There was a lot of, uh, sex. <laughs> and a lot, um, yeah, there was a lot of different kinks explored. Interestingly, it was, it was, it was something. I was like, wow. It was, yeah, there, and I don't know, having someone read it to you, to me, was, um, a little weird. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it felt like this guy. Thank god I didn't like his voice because I'd be like, I'd be like, oh my god, it would feel like he was talking to me. And I, oh. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. It was just a lot. Oh boy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I liked it. It was good. It was good. Um, you know, I was a little nervous about, like, to see how she handled, like, villain. Um, because he's definitely morally gray. He's not, like, an upstanding man of society. But I think she did well, especially with the consent situation. Woo! Okay, one down, and it was a success. I liked it. It was very sexual. Holy moly. But it was good. So... Uh, next, I'm going to be reading Learn My Lesson. Um, yeah, I'm going to be, here's the deal, right? I don't, I'm going to be reading these interspersed with other books. So, I don't quite know when I'm going to be reading Learn My Lesson. Not, yeah, Learn My Lesson. Um, but we'll see. So, I will chat with you once I've started it. And we'll see when this is. This is just going to play out, like, through time, um, because I feel like if I just try and sit down and read seven super smutty books, I'm gonna get in a little bit of a reading slump. I think I need these to be kind of in between a few other books so that I have something like different to read in between my high fantasy and sci-fi. Um, but I'm going to... I don't even think I'll be able to get through all of them in February, uh, but we'll see. I'm going to try. But I'm, I enjoyed Desperate Measures, and I'm really excited to pick up Learn My Lesson. And honestly, I'll probably be wearing this for most of it, because this, I wear this all the time. So it might literally look like it's still today, like the same day when I'm reading Learn My Lesson. But it won't be. So I will talk to you all later. <laughs> Bye. Hello. It is for Saturday, February 20th, and I started Learn My Lesson last night, which is the Hades... Meg and Hercules one villain story and it's okay I'm definitely liking it less than Desperate Measures I'm now halfway through so um if you go by like Nook that means I'm like 100 pages out of the 200 pages but if you go by like Goodreads I'm like 127 pages into it it's it's okay I like Meg a lot I like Hercules I'm just not liking Hades and I think like for these to work you have to like the villain or the good guy <laughs> you know the love interest in this because he's just like you know they're already very questionable morally gray characters and so like you need to like like something about him and i'm just not like he know like meg is kind of they've been together for 10 years and meg is kind of starting to lose like the romance and the chemistry and she's just like you know like no one knows her better she's like weird soulmates like they're so perfect for each other but she's just losing the love and the confidence um, in their relationship. And Hades like knows it and he's just not doing anything about it. 
and he's kind of using Meg right now to get revenge because it turns out Hercules' dad is Zeus. Like that's his character's name who runs this city. And Hades used to help run that city until Zeus screwed him over and exiled him. And so Hades is basically using Hercules to get back at Zeus. And so Hades has just brought Hercules into like um, the underworld, this club, and his, he's now working for him. And they have a deal because Hercules met Meg and thought that Hades was forcing her to be with him. So Hades traded himself for Meg, but Hades used, or Hercules traded himself for Meg. And Hades, but Hades used the wording like, you trade yourself and I won't force her to do anything. But he never forced her to do anything in the first place. Cause again, like Desperate Measures, they have a safe word. And so now hate Hercules is just like under his control and Meg isn't leaving. So it's okay. I'm not really liking it that much yet. Um, I just like, like I said, I like Meg. I like Hercules. There isn't much of a plot, so there's nothing like really there that I'm liking. Um, and I just don't like Hades. So yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, but we'll see. I'm halfway through. I've got a hundred Nook pages to go. So I'm definitely gonna finish that today. I was gonna go to a nearby like city with my mom to do some shopping, but it is blizzarding out. So, and it's an hour and a half away. So we are probably gonna hang out at home. So I'm just gonna go and finish this and I will tell you my ending thoughts but right now it's definitely gonna be less than desperate measures unless these next hundred pages just wow the socks off me but I just don't think it's going to so we'll see because there's only one way that I think it would really impress me and that'd be if Meg decides to leave Hades for Hercules and like the two of them like run off or whatever but that's not gonna happen because that's not the point of these stories. These books are like a love story between the usually like the the leading lady and the villain. So we'll see. But I'm gonna go and I will I guess talk to you all later once I've read it or finished it and give you hopefully what might be a plot. Be like, okay, here was the end plot. We'll see. Because even now, I just don't know what, like, the climax would be. Like, Desperate Measures is obviously going to be a showdown with Ali. Um, in this one, there's not really anything that's leading to that. So, we'll see. Alright, I am 75% of the way through Lunar Lesson, which is 50 Nook Book pages left. The plot is happening. And it is getting back at Hercules' dad for what he did to... Hades and just because he's a terrible person. That's basically the end plot. I am liking it more. I like Hercules a lot. Hercules is like he's the most sexually innocent of the three but he's like the most emotionally mature because he's like Hercules, he's like Hades just talk to her just sit down and talk to her you know and it's like really funny but like in a good way and Hades listens which is surprising. Gonna, gonna be honest it's surprising. Um, I don't know like obvious that Hades loves her and it's like good like you know like he he will do like basically anything for her but I'm just I don't know I'm really not invested in their relationship even though we had a whole book before this of them I'm just like Meg deserves better than him but I think that they're all, they all bring something to the relationship, which is good. Hercules brings emotional maturity. <laughs> Hades brings being the dominant one and the powerful one. He brings the money and Meg brings other stuff. <laughs> I feel like Hercules is, is most obvious because Hades and Meg were just not talking. And, he, and Hercules is like, just communicate, which was funny. Cause you know, that's like so many times what people like, like I hate when I'm like, just talk. And it's like miscommunication. I hate it. And Hercules is like, bitch. Hercules is like, enough. He's like, just talk it out. Just, just communicate, which is funny. But yeah, so it's like fine. I'm like interested to see what happens, but it's also like, I'm finding it kind of average. Um, especially compared to Desperate Measures. I'm also really nervous about Hook because he seems like a bit of a sleaze. Like, seriously, it's like, even in this, like, world of, like, you know, powerful mafia men, he still seems, like, more of a sleaze than the rest. And, like, like Tink is one of our main supporting characters through the series, and she really doesn't like him. And I'm, like, a little nervous that he's actually going to be, like, really gross, 
and I'm not gonna like a worthy opponent. <laughs> We'll see. I want to meet, we met Aurora, which is cool. She's sweet. She's a sub. I thought for some reason she was a dom, which makes no sense because of course the Maleficent character would be the dom. Um, but she's like really sweet and like cute and kind of like girly, which is good. And I think she'll be an interesting difference than these other main characters. But I want to meet like the other characters, like Gay Gayton. Gate, I think that was his name, Gaten, and like Ursula and stuff. But also, Ursula might. I don't know. I don't know how Ursula is going to work into this because there's actual tentacle porn. So maybe they're not in Culver City. I don't know. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's like, it's a way down the line. But um, yeah, so I'm a little nervous about a worthy opponent. But I am interested to see what happens with learn my lesson. <laughs> I'm like, learn my lesson, learn your lesson. I can't remember which one, but I'm going to go finish it and I will talk to you once I've done so. All right. It's 5 PM on Saturday and I just finished learn your lesson <laughs> and it was good. I liked it more as it went along. Um, I do like their dynamic as a polyamorous relationship. Hades grew on me. Um, and I liked both Meg and Hercules. So I am going to give it a three out of five stars. It didn't wow me. It wasn't anything. It was good, but it wasn't really like I think it could have been more. So three out of five stars. Wow, something is just glaring. But yeah, so next is going to be a worthy opponent. Not sure when I'm going to get to that yet, but I'm really excited to have two down. I enjoyed both, but I did like a desperate, me desperate measures more than learn my lesson. But I will see you soon, hopefully, with a worthy opponent. Hi guys, it is May 7th. It is 10 1021 and I am house sitting. So if you see a few weeks ago, maybe even a month ago's reading vlog um, where I start May, I'm house sitting for a week and it is about to be Saturday. And I was planning on a 24 hour readathon and I was planning on doing it with like my own TBR, like physical books that were on my, um, promoted May TBR. But I thought, why not just try and finish the rest of these books? Um, and so that is what I'm going to do. Each book is basically 200 pages, which works out like fantastically. I am on a worthy opponent, but I'm also thinking I might try and actually read like the short stories in between the books to kind of break up the books. So I think right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Jasmine and... Megara's short stories and you know I mean these are like fast romances I think we all know like how they end so if they're a little spoilery that's fine by me um so that is what I'm going to try to do I'm gonna try and read them on my laptop but like my nook library on my laptop sometimes kind of like fritz out and only lets me read like the first so many pages or so many chapters so we'll see if it doesn't let me then I will read off my phone the the uh power went out earlier and I was so like oh my gosh what am I gonna do this 24 hour readathon is not gonna work and it would have ended up actually working for reading these books because they're all ebooks uh but now the power is back on so I can thankfully like vlog while doing it and maybe read off my computer and if anything starts to die I can plug them in but I'm going to read those two short stories and I will get back to you with my thoughts okay it is 10:48, and there are 16 short stories i thought it was like one per group or like pairing uh, i was wrong so i'm gonna read three short stories in between each book because i've got five books left um so that basically works out so i read three the first three were all centered around jasmine so that worked out perfectly next i'll read ones that are centered around meg and I don't know if there's two or more. I know there's two, but I'm not sure if there's more. So if there aren't any more, then I'll start one that's Tinks and then go from there. So a worthy opponent is a Tink and Hook retelling. I don't know why I did not think it was Tink until a while, like a little, but I mean like in the grand scheme of things a while ago but like I mean way after I read the second book I was like yeah Wendy and then I literally kind of was like Max it is so gonna be Tink like <laughs> I was like what? of course it's Tink she's one of her like main characters stupid 
but Tink was in a really, really abusive relationship with Peter. So Peter, so Tink got out of this abusive relationship with Peter by starting to work for Hades, but her contract is up and Hook offers to marry, if she marries him, he will get rid of Peter and he'll protect her. She says no, but then when, like, the day that her contract ends, she runs into Peter and he threatens her, she decides to agree to the marriage. I am on chapter five because I realized I had totally, like, I just, like, started it and then I was like, wait a second, I need to actually update you. It is 200 pages, um, and it started on page 400, so I'm 408 pages in, <laughs> and chapter five already, and, um, they are already married. Like she just, they just finished the wedding ceremony and I am ready. I am such a sucker for like Hook is like a good guy. I mean, obviously Hook, like these are villainous romances. So he's at least morally gray, but Peter is like the bad guy. And I think it all stems from once upon a time. <laughs> I think that's it. So I am going to read this and I don't know how much I'll read because I'm going to set my alarm for eight. So if I try to read to like, t you know, midnight like usual and then get some sleep, I can wake up early, finish a worthy opponent, and then go and run some errands. And let's see what else do I want to do today and tomorrow. I'm going to probably then like read another book. Um, the Beast is next. And then go to the gym. And then read the last two at that point because I've got the short stories in between. So that's my plan for now. <laughs> And I'll talk to you all once I decide to go to sleep. Hi everyone. It is after midnight. I am halfway through a worthy opponent. It's okay. Tink is kind of annoying me, honestly. Like Tinkerbell, the like Disney character has never been my favorite. I really don't like her. And so she's just like, she just keeps doing really stupid stuff and like holding grudges that shouldn't be held. Like the way that she acts around Peter, totally understand it. He sucks and everything. But the way that she's treating Hook for things that like she not did, but like he tried to help her escape Peter and she just outright like said no and then like tried to guilt trip him about not doing anything to get her out and he was like um i tried and it's just that she's like well you know you didn't try hard enough or you sh you're stupid to think that you know that it would have been that easy and it's just like girl at least he tried everyone else was willing to just leave you to the wolves and it's just i don't know and she goes she's so indecisive and she keeps just going back and forth and being mean and just rude and i just don't like it like i liked her a lot as a side character but i am just not enjoying her as a main character which is so disappointing because i'm really liking hook as like the main love interest so but now i am really tired i'm gonna set my alarm for eight and try and finish a worthy opponent and then check in with you probably once i have done so good night Hi guys, it is 10.40 in the morning and I just finished A Worthy Opponent. It was okay. I mean, like, it was a little bit like they went from one minute Tink being like, I hate your guts, me, 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 to all of a sudden being like, I love you, Ooh. And it just felt a little rushed and a little ridiculous. So honestly, I think it's my least favorite at the moment, which is so sad. I thought it was going to be my favorite and it just wasn't. <laughs> Both of the, um, like, Peter Pan retellings for these secret vlogs have kind of let me down, and I'm a little sad about it, um, but it was fine. I think it's just because I really don't like Tinkerbell, like, as a Disney character, and so, like, her trying, like, Katie Roberts trying to, like, emanate, like, Tinkerbell's, like, personality and stuff really did not work for me. So I am now going to go run a bunch of errands and restart read a couple of the short stories, three of the short stories. And then, I don't know, I might not be able to update you, but start the beast, which is a Gaten beast and Isabel Thrupple retelling. We'll see how it goes. But that is all I've got for you right now. I think I'm gonna give a worthy opponent three out of five stars. Honestly, yeah, did not do a whole lot for me, which is very sad, <laughs> but, I'll talk to you all later. All right, it is like 
15 minutes later and I just remember that Hoopla has all of these on audiobook so I just borrowed the beast and I'm going to listen to it while I run my errands it's perfect um I'm also I think now that I've got the audiobook uh when I'm in a nearby town to like do my um errands is a great like walking spot so I'm gonna take my dog and like take her for a walk and everything while I listen to the audiobook it's just perfect. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped that I remembered this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have not started it yet and I'll talk to you later. Hi guys. So it is a few hours later. Actually, I don't even know what time it is. 2.25 and I am more than halfway through The Beast. I'm really enjoying it actually. A little, I mean, not super surprising because Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite Disney movies. But I don't know, I didn't expect to like it as much as I am enjoying it. I really like Gaten and the Beast. I'm pronouncing it wrong, like Gaten's name, but I just don't care. The audiobook, like the male narrator, I think he has the same one that was in Desperate Measures. And I do not love his voice. I feel like it's a little weird. So I am back to reading it like on my nook and it's going really well. Um, so the neighbors have horses and they jumped the fence and they were in my yard and then they like ran. And so I followed them for a little bit. Now the owner knows, but so that took up a little bit of time, but it is so gloomy out. I think it's about to start storming. So I'm gonna curl up on the couch like I have been for the past little bit and continue reading. And I am charging, like this battery for my camera is in the middle of charging right now. So I'm gonna let it continue doing that and I'll probably update you once I'm done with the book. But honestly, really liking it. I'm really enjoying it. Oh God. Her nickname right now is like my favorite out of all of them because like Jasmine's was like baby girl and I hate that. I can't remember what Meg's was. Tink's was beautiful girl, which is like better but not great. And now Isabelle's is princess, which like out of all of them, I'm more, I'm like the most okay with. I don't know what um, Ariel's or Aurora's are gonna be, but we shall see. Anyways, I did not read the short stories because I just started listening to the audiobook and now I am so invested. So I'll like read six short stories um, after I'm done with the beast and I'll talk to you all later. All right, it is almost four and I have finished the beast. I really liked it. I did. Um, I thought it was really good, honestly. And I think, I don't know, I'm gonna give it a five out of five stars. I think it was really well done and especially compared to the other three in this series, I feel like it is just so much better. Um, I think it might be because I liked both Beast and Gaten so much. Like I thought that they were both like really great like guys. Uh, really enjoyed it. Neither of them felt villainous. Like I mean some of these others like they felt like the vil like their villain counterpart or not counterpart but like you know who they are in the story but these guys like didn't feel that way and like yes they're a little bit morally gray but honestly on the whole they're like good guys and I just enjoyed it so yeah I'm really happy about that I think I'm gonna try and take a nap I am tired <laughs> I'm just kind of feeling a little groggy which I drink like two cups of like I drank like a regular cup of coffee and like a Starbucks coffee like I don't know why I am so tired but I'm gonna take a nap and I do have to help my dad with something a little bit later today I don't know when so hopefully like if he calls me that'll wake me up if that's the case uh, we'll see but yeah so uh, next is the Ursula one um, the sea witch I am definitely by far most nervous about this one. I hear there might be some tentacle porn involved and I am not huge into that. Um, also, like she was the main villain of this last story. So I don't know how I feel about now just jumping right into like her love story, but I am intrigued. I think this might be another thruple um, because Zuriel is th like Ariel. And then there's also Alaric, who is like involved, so we'll see. But first, I am gonna take a little bit of a nap because I am feeling quite tired, and I will talk to you all once I have made some progress in the Sea Witch. Hi everyone, it's 5.30, and I'm kind of procrastinating. I started the Sea Witch, and it's... 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm not a huge like age gap person. So like the fact that like Ursa might be like in her 50s and uh, Zuri is 23, 22. <laughs> oh no. And then there's also a virginity auction storyline. I don't know. None of these things are really appealing to me. And then if there's tentacle porn, I'm really not going to be appealed. <laughs> um. I'm like debating on just skipping ahead to Queen Takes a Rose and then coming back to the Sea Queen because it's also in the longer ones and I don't want that either. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I start, the audiobook is not good. Like their narrators are not good. Um, and it always, I feel like it's especially for one of them. Most, most of the time it's the guy, but in this it's Ursa. Ursa, oh. It's just weird, I'm just not liking it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead to Queen Takes a Rose and come back to the Sea Witch. We'll see. <laughs> so I will talk to you once I've made some progress in Queen Takes a Rose. All right, it is 7.30 and I am halfway through Queen Takes Rose. It's good, it's fun. It's kind of actually a revenge tale where Maleficent, she has a different name, but I can't think of it right now, where Maleficent fought Aurora's mom and won the territory from her. And Maleficent does not know who Aurora is. And I've got these marks on my face because I fell asleep on the couch. So when I told you I was thinking about taking a nap earlier, I ended up not, and then I just woke up from a nap now. So I'm going to, Read more of Queen Takes Rose, start dinner, and I'll talk to you all probably once I have finished the book. Bye. Oh, it's good. It's, I'm enjoying it. Um, I do like Aurora a lot as our main character. Um, and even the Maleficent character is actually interesting and pretty cool. So we'll see how it goes. All right, <laughs> it's 10 and I just finished Queen Takes Rose. And I really liked it actually. Um, I also gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I don't know if I like this one or The Beast more, but I really liked it. The revenge plot was like super good because it turned, I can't remember if I talked about this, but it turned out Malone or Ro uh, Aurora's mom used to be like the, the area <laughs> ruler. Oh my god, the tri not the tribe ruler, territory ruler, and she sucked. And Aurora lived with her grandmother. Her mom sent her there to keep her like safe. And Malone sent her mom into a coma when she openly challenged her, which was like within her right and everything. And R Aurora just takes her mom off of life support at the beginning of the book. And so when Malone wants to take over the last two weeks of her deal with Hades, she agrees to enact revenge. And that was really interesting. I liked Aurora a lot as our main character. Um, I feel like my screen is showing some weird lights. Hopefully that not oh, yeah. I really liked Aurora as our main character. I liked the romance, the hate to love. Something was revealed like near the end that just slapped. I was like, oh, like I really had like an actual reaction where I was like, whoa. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really liked this. Um, I'm surprised and happy and yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> I am more intrigued with the sea witch because we got one scene <laughs> in Queen Takes Rose where she's like talking to Ursa and she like reminisces about like what happened in the sea witch and I'm slightly more intrigued. I only have two hours. So I don't know if I want to read as many short stories. I mean, I'm going to probably stay up because I took like a 40 minute nap so I'm feeling very well rested. Um, I'm going to try and stay up to finish both the Sea Witch and the short stories but I think I'm going to read like as many short stories as I can that don't revolve around Zuri and Ursa and Alaric. That's how I'm pronouncing his name and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, really enjoyed Queen Takes Bros. Was not expecting that. I honestly, it's been so long since I made my ranking. I cannot remember where I placed anything. Um, but also, like, looking back, I think my ranking has changed. Again, can't remember, like, even, like, from reading the first two books. I think I said I like Desperate Measures more. But honestly, I, like, learn your lesson more. Um, 
I think because we haven't really seen Jafar and Jasmine in like any of the other books and even the short stories that like I've read were Jafar and Jasmine and I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think right now, no, <laughs> I think right now it's like tied for Queen Takes Rose and the Beast and then Learn My Lesson, Desperate Measures, and then Worthy Opponent, but Worthy Opponent, Desperate Measures might swap because I like Hook more than Jafar and I like the nickname more because baby girl I friggin hate and her calling him daddy I cannot get behind I just <laughs> so yeah I think actually Desperate Measures is at the bottom then a worthy opponent then learn your lesson and then at the top our queen takes Rose and the Beast because I can't choose I'm indecisive they're too different you know like if it was two like heterosexual romances I feel like I'd be able to compare them more but one is female female which maybe should make it rank first because it was so good but then the other one was like polyamorous which like you know it's also an interesting s difference i guess but yeah so <laughs> i'm like wow i can't believe how much i like that i yeah i'm really happy the sea witch deals also with the polyamorous relationship and yeah and then i've just got the short stories so I'm gonna read a few short stories and I probably honestly won't talk to you till I've made some serious progress in The Sea Witch. Or if I DNF it, we'll see. We'll see, cause something was revealed in um, Queen Takes Rose that I'm a little bit like, ugh, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. But like that's the whole reason why I wanna read it is to be like, okay, why does Zuri like forgive them and get on board with this? Like, what's going on? We'll see. So anyways, I'm gonna go read. I'll talk to you later. Hi guys, it's 12.48 and I have 100 pages left of The Sea Witch. I finished the short stories. They were good. I think I'm gonna give it like a four out of five stars. Like it's, it was fine. Um, I didn't objectively like dislike any of the stories. Most of them were really short, so. So they went by just really fast. Uh, The Sea Witch is okay. I'm not liking it. The tentacle porn element was just introduced. <laughs> just really nervous about that um it's I don't know like yes most of these books have had an element of like hate sex in them but this is like it's just like a little extra and I don't really like Ursa nor Alaric like at least I've like gotten into the other guys especially because the girls like there isn't like this trickery involved, you know? So it's like, even though they're part of the, <laughs> God, part of the kink is basically like running and the chase and like, you know, like that sort of stuff. They're all voluntarily doing it. They all like want to do it. This just feels very dirty um, and not in a good way because like Alaric full on tricks her to get her to like sell her virginity to buy his freedom from Hades. But like she didn't know that he was in on it with Ursa, who gives her the idea in the first place and then who buys her virginity. And it's just like very, it just, it, <laughs> you know, I don't like it. Um, yes, there is like the safe word element, but it still feels really bad. Like I'm not really into it. I don't like Ursa. Alaric, I don't really like Alaric either, but he makes like slightly more sense. And and I know like Hades did the same thing to Hercules in Learn Your Lesson, where like he's literally like used Hercules like get back at his dad. And that's what Alaric and Ursa are doing. I just, for some reason, it feels worse. It feels, and I think it's because of that whole like buying the virginity thing and tricking her into that. Cause like Hades didn't do that. He just was like, hey Meg, here's a new like boy toy. And Hercules was like, tis I, a himbo. And like, it worked out fine. This is like full on manipulation, not great. And also this might be like, she's not like a bratty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, you know, she's not like a bratty sub. So like, she just like takes it. She just like kneels and takes it. Oh my God. So it's just like so uncomfortable for me. I just don't feel like, like at least these other girls fight back. They got some bite to them, you know, where like it feels like they're not just like getting trampled. Like they hold their own. Zuri, not so much. Zuri just 
Like, uh, and I know that that is definitely, I'm sure there are a lot of like submissives in the real world that don't fight, that aren't bratty or whatever, but it just like, it adds an extra dimension of just feeling like they are totally just like using her and just like, I don't know, I'm just like not really into it. I'm very, I'm like, as I read this, I'm just like uncomfortable constantly. I just moved to the bedroom and boy, has that put a kickstart on me yawning and being tired. Cause I was like up on the couch and I was like, yeah, this is fine. I feel great. Like I'm not even tired, like, especially after that 40 minute nap, but now I'm crashing. Honestly, unless it like really starts to get good, I'm going to read until I fall asleep and then if if I finish it before then, then fine. If I don't, I'm not going to continue it because honestly, it's just I'm I mean, I only have 100 pages left. So I but like that basically means I'm like halfway through. And for me, I consider like I will count it as a book I, I've read if I'm over 100 pages or like 50%, um, which in this case it's both. But I just, so I'll still count it as read because I've read enough of it to like, you know, really understand. Like I could give a rating and I just, it just makes me uncomfortable. Mm. <laughs> I don't like it. It's just like, mm, I don't know. I feel like, like, yes, there is an element of using and everything in like, okay, this sounds bad and stereotypical, but like in BDSM relationships, there's like the dom and the sub. And like, there's a lot of times where there's kinks of like women just like, you know, being, or people, people being used you know like yeah, so that sort of thing like fine sure right like as long as they're both like willing participants I don't know I don't really want to read it so you know what I'm not going to I'm not gonna make myself I knew this was gonna be my least favorite and it was like I don't like this trickery I don't like the. I just don't like it <laughs> so I'm done I'm done you know why read it I don't want to um so I guess I could give my rankings because I've finished all the books. At the top, still tie. No, at the top is going to be Queen Takes Rose with a five out of five stars. It's an awesome female, female romance that was just like so much fun. So great. I love Aurora. I love Malone. They're amazing. Love them. Number two is The Beast. I really enjoyed this one too. It's like... You know, I had a hard time coming to term, like, okay, this is gonna sound bad. I live in an area that the Mormon religion is very, very prevalent, and polyamory is pretty, you know, it's a part of some Mormon sex. S-E-C-T-S, sex, sects. And it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty non-consensual in the grand scheme of things, where it's like one man, a bunch of younger women who are groomed to become wives, and I had a really hard time coming to terms with a like consensual, happy polyamory, until like I met people in college who were in polyamorous relationships and explained it and it makes it made me feel a lot better but i still like i just like got a twinge of uncomfortableness in books that include this just because of the religion that i grew up around i am not mormon i was not raised mormon but i just so many people that i know and just like women i mean <sighs> this can get dicey right but women a lot of times in this religion aren't treated great uh, they aren't really expected to do anything after high school except get married and have kids. If they do go to college, it's for, you know, a degree that's basically like home economics. Um, and they have kids and they keep having kids until they can't anymore. And it's just, they're not treated super well, um, a lot of the time. And so I just have a, had a hard time coming in terms with like consensual, happy, polyamorous relationships where women feel good. Uh, but then I knew women who are in those relationships and they, you know, I'm not trying to discriminate or anything. It's just like, I just know from like people that I knew back home that it's, it's not great. You know, they're basically forced into this position because of this religion. But with non-religious polyamorous relationships, I'm definitely, I'm on board, I'm with it, I get it, you know, great. So, like, the fact that number two is a polyamorous relationship, I'm really happy about. Because, like, it showed 
you know, like it's consensual and it's happy and they all love each other and there's a very much, like each person brings a different dynamic to the group, but they're all on equal footing and I loved it. Five out of five stars. Next, <laughs> funnily enough, number four, number three is another polyamorous relationship. <laughs> And that was learn my lesson. What the hell? And I think this comes more because in the rest of the books, Hades, Hercules, and Meg are still such key players. And I love all of them. So like, even though like, I mean, God, it's been a while since I read it. And I knew, know I had issues with it. And I think the most of the issues were with Hades. But like, I like Hades more as the series has gone on. Like him with Aurora and how he like reacted to like stuff with like Isabel and everything. He's very much like a protector, which you don't really understand. Like, I don't know, like it took me a minute to like get that where I'm like, oh no, he like does really care for the people in his employment. And he like will do anything basically for them if they are currently in a deal or with like Aurora past that. And so, you know, I respect him. And so that's why I learned my lesson is third. Number four is a worthy opponent. Tink drove me crazy. Did not like her very much. I don't like Tinkerbell as a character, but I did like Hook. I think she did Hook really well. Um, he's a nice guy, but like, of course he's slightly villainous. Like all these guys are villainous, right? Like they're morally gray, but they gotta be because that's the whole point of this series. But Hook was like a really sweet guy. Like he's like, I just love you. Like, let me just like protect you, please. Like, I just love you. And I, I can get behind a himbo, you know, who just like would do anything for their wife. Like I'm, you know, we love that respect. We love it. So there we go. Um, right. And then I gave that one, I think I gave it a three on Goodreads, but I want to say probably more like a 3.5, 3.75. Then number five is Desperate Measures. First book that I read, right, um, and it was like fine, but the baby girl thing really and the daddy kink, I just can't get into. I can't get into it. And I didn't like Jafar as much as like Hook, you know? So A Worthy Opponent and Desperate Measures were kind of on the same length, but I'm gonna put Desperate Measures under because I didn't like J J Jafar as much, even though I did like Jasmine more than Tink, so. Um, but the daddy kink and the baby girl thing, can't get behind it, so it's under. And then the last one by far is The Sea Witch, which I am technically DNFing, but I would say I'd give it like a two out of five stars. Uh, it just like took some of the like, in the other books where if it wasn't very much plainly stated like how into it these characters were, it could be seen as something bad which then it did feel like that in The Sea Witch because it didn't seem like Zuri actually really wanted it because she sold herself. Um, so yeah. So what like the revenge sex, like I mean I know Hades did it with Hercules, but Hercules like entered into this relationship willingly while Zuri didn't feel like it very much. And I don't know, maybe it's, and this is probably bad, but maybe it's because she's a girl and he's a guy where I just like, I don't know, we might not want to broach that, but I feel a bit more protective over girls, especially since she's like a 23, 22 year old, very innocent girl who's literally a virgin and just sold herself. Like I just like, I'm still, you know, so, and I don't like either of the love interests, and she's like a little bit stupidly naive, and so, two out of five stars, definitely my least favorite. And then the short story collection, I'm not ranking, because it's just short stories, and they were all like five pages. So, you know, I mean, they were fine. I gave it a four out of five stars. Honestly, it's not the worst anthology I've ever read, um, so, because I, a lot of my times, in anthologies, there's at least one story that I just don't like. I'm like, okay, this stupid, bad rating, these were all fine. I didn't even rate each story like by itself because they're so short that like, yeah, I like some stories more than others, but overall like they, they were all fun. Um, <laughs> so four out of four out of five stars. All right, everyone, I have done it. This concludes my second secret TBR. I'm so excited. This one took a while, and that's because I read the first two and then like went on a hiatus for a while and then just finished the last five today. 
So I hope you all enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Keep your eye out for my next secret reading vlog or any other videos that come your way. Bye.